Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to teach you about the different numbered data types. Alright guys, so we know how to make variables and we know how to make strings now and uh, you know stuff like that but now I'll finally show you how to make or how to use the different numbered data types okay so far we know the integer of course which is you know a simple data type for storing numbers but of course there's limits to the size that you can use whenever you're working with integers as we saw whenever we went to 5 billion we could we got like a little error it used a random number instead of the error I mean the number that we chose so yeah I'm going to show you the different data types um, that you might want to use depending on how big the number is that you want to use okay so of course let's make our C++ file here so we can start coding um, let's give it a name and everything, and we'll do all this crap here. So, IO stream. Alright, using space std, and then int main turn zero. Alright, so there we go. There's our basic template that we can use. And so, like I said, we can create an integer like this. So, we can do int bob is equal to 45, and then we can print out the value of 45 to make sure and like see what it is. So, uh, see out bob in line. So, let's try that out. Okay, so it should print out 45 if we did that correctly. Awesome, so we get 45. That works perfectly, right? But like I said, if we go above or below a certain range, like we'll try, um, let's add a bunch of zeros here. If we go above a certain range, that means that we're going to get a little bit of a bit of a problem here because we did not um, use the correct data type. Okay, so as you can see here, instead of this big number that we told it to store, it stored something else. It stored negative one. 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 2, 6, 2, 8, instead of this one, right? That is because we went out of the limits that are set by an integer, okay? So like I said before, variables allocate a certain amount of memory within your, your computer to store data, right? That means that an integer stores a certain amount of memory, right? And that only means that it can hold a certain um, size of a number, right? Because the bigger the number or the smaller the number, like, you know, more negative, more, more positive, it means that it's going to use more memory, right? If we use a number like 5 compared to 45 million, the number that is 45 million is going to take up more memory because because it takes up more digits, right? It just makes perfect sense that you want to use more memory whenever you're using more digits in a number, right? So this number is massive, meaning it's going to use more memory as opposed to something like this small, right? So an integer works perfectly fine whenever you're using a number this small, but once you make it bigger, you're going to have to work on changing the data type to fit um, a different amount of memory, okay? Because there's different number data types depending on how much memory you want to use. For example, the integer data type is going to fit a certain range of numbers, but if you want to use a massive number, you're going to use the long, long data type, the long, long integer data type, which is going to allocate more memory, meaning that you can have a larger number or a smaller number in case of, you know, negative, right? So I know that was a lot. I ran through that pretty quick, but let me go ahead and show you because it's easier to show you, obviously. The first thing I want to do is show you the C++ file I have here. It's basically a documentation it's basically a documentation showing you the limits for the different types of data types within uh, C++. So if you look down here, you can see integer minimum. So the minimum number that you can use for an integer is going to be negative 32,767. And then the integer max is going to be positive 32,767, okay? But then if you use a long, long minimum, which is going to be the highest data type that you can use in terms of memory size for a whole number, you're going to get this massive number that you can use here. I can't even say that number because it's so big. But that's the limit you can use for if you use a long, long, right? And then you have the short data type, and then you have the long data type. We're going to explore all these data types. But yeah, I want you to use this website. Make sure you bookmark it for future reference because you might forget all this stuff. But I'll leave it in the description anyway. So in case you want to check it out, I'll leave the link there for you. And the code for today's episode will have all this too just don't worry so anyway when you're working with integers there's a certain number or range of numbers that you can use obviously right we established that so this is the official range that you have on that website that I just showed you but as you can see here it allows bigger numbers than this number for some reason right so if we do 45,000 instead of 32,000 it'll still work for some reason let's check it out oh wait we forgot to close the other one I think oh there we go so yeah 45,000 and the reason this works for some reason is because your compiler allows you to actually use this range. This is actually the range for a long data type, but we'll get to that in a second. But for some reason, it allows you to go to this range. But this is just the official range, but the allowed range is actually this one right here, which means that it can go up to this number. But if it goes even one digit or one number above this number, um, it's going to not work. Okay, so let's try that out, right? So let's try running this, and it should work. And it does work, actually. So we see 2147483647. So it works perfectly, right? But let's go one number above that, which will take it out of the range of allowed numbers, right? And it's not going to work anymore. It's going to generate that random number. Or in this case, it's not random. It's just the negative number. 
But yeah, as you can see here, it generates a negative number, which is not the number we set it to use, and that is because we went out of the range. So that's a problem, right? We have to stay within the range. So the official range, again, is going to be negative 32,767 to, to uh, 32,767. But the allowed range is going to be officially this right here, these, this massive number, okay? And so that's the basic integer data type. That's the numbers that you want to use whenever you're using an integer. But now you have another data type, and this is called the long data type. And the long data type is for massive numbers, too. It's actually the same range as this one right here. So it's going to be this exact range. So let's go ahead and make a variable first. So long integer. So it's going to be a long integer, not just an integer, it's going to be a long integer this time. So long integer, bob2 is going to be equal to, and let's just give it a number, something like this. See if that works. And then we're going to put the range here. I copied and pasted it. So this is the official range for a long integer, okay? This is going to be the official range. And, and there's no exceptions. You cannot go above this range or below this range. That's only for the integer. That's the only exception. But this one has no exceptions, okay? It has to stay within this range. Um, or it's going to return an error, okay? So we'll do C out, and then we'll do Bob2 in line, and let's see what happens. And this, as you can see here, this number is above the range, so it should provide a random number because we did it wrong. And nothing happens. We forgot to close the old one again. I keep doing that. But as you can see here, we get a random number, which is not what we told us to use, but that's because we went out of the range, of course, right? So make sure you stay within the range. So one question that you might have is why use a long integer when the integer itself can go within that same range that the long integer can go within, okay? And that's because sometimes when you're coding, you might know that you're going to have a massive number, okay? You're going to know for sure that that number you're about to use is going to be massive. So in that case, since you know it's going to be a big number, you're going to want to use a long integer so it's going to allocate more memory for that number that you know it's going to be massive, okay? So it's really just about how much memory you want to use, okay? So if you want to use a integer, then yeah, it's, that's going to be fine. You can use that if you want to. But if you know it's going to be a big number, then you probably just want to use a long integer anyway. So just go ahead and use a long integer. Likewise, the data type that I'm about to show you right now is going to be called a short, which is for smaller numbers, okay? So I'm going to show you that right now. So short int bob3 is going to be, um, we'll just give it a number of like that. And the range for a short is going to be negative 32,767 and 32,767, which is similar to the integer, right? That's the exact same range, except that an integer can go beyond that, obviously, right? So basically, you want to use a short integer whenever you know that the number is going to be actually smaller and it cannot go above or below the range that is set for it, right? So for example, if you know in your program that you're going to use the number 45, right? then you probably just want to use a short integer so you can go ahead and automatically allocate the shortest amount of memory possible, okay? Because if you think about it, if you use a long or an integer instead of a short, you're allocating memory that you don't need to be allocating, right? Because this one knows, because this one is especially for short numbers, right? So hopefully that makes sense, but, but basically you want to use a short, a long, or an integer depending on how big you know the number is going to be. And if it's going to be short, obviously you want to use a short, right? So that's for short, that's going to be for smaller numbers, but now you finally have a massive one, okay? This is called long, long. So this is going to be a massive number. So Bob4 is going to be long, long, and we could put a massive number here. And the range for a long, long, let me paste it here for you, it's going to be between that and that, and it's absolutely crazy, right? So it should work because it stays within that range. It looks, at least it looks like it. So we'll do Bob4, and we'll see if it works perfectly. Yeah, and we get this number, which is the exact number that we set it to use. And yeah, that's pretty cool, right? So if we go above that number, let's try doing that. If we go if we go above the range for long, long, we should get an error just like before because you need to stay within your limits, right? There we go. So yeah, we get the wrong number, which is not the number that we set it to use, okay? So yeah, that's the same rule for everything, just depending on how what... Just depending on what data type you use, you want to stay within those limits or it's not going to give you the right number, okay? So those are the four main data types for that you want to use whenever you're working with a uh, number, a whole number, okay? Just depends on the size of the number, right? If you want to use a long, long, that's for a massive number. If you want to use a short, that's for a small number. A long is for a big number. And then integer is for a, a big, small, or whatever kind of number you want to use. It's more versatile, right? There's actually one more thing I want to show you when it comes to whole numbers and data types for whole numbers. It's actually called the unsigned data type. So unsigned data types are for whenever you don't want to use a negative, okay? You know that the number is going to be positive, okay? So let's try doing that. So we'll do unsigned integer um, lace uh, sherry. I'm running out of names here. So unsigned int sherry is equal to something like this. And so the official range for an unsigned integer is going to be between 0 and 65,535, okay? And the reason it's and the reason it gets this big in terms of the positive number is because since you're not using any negative numbers anymore, you can take that memory and then add it on to the memory that you want to use for the positive numbers, and therefore you have a bigger number that you can use 
for the positive number because you have more you have more memory allocated for positive numbers since you know you're not going to be using negative number and yeah it's called unsigned because you don't want to use a negative number there's no sign it's just going to be positive right hopefully that makes sense for you so if you go ahead and unsign the long so we'll do unsigned long integer bob or sherry two you can use an even bigger range that would be right here i'm about to paste it for you so this is the range for an unsigned long integer that's going to be between 0 and 42,000 or not 42,000 just 42,9,4,9,6,7,2,9,5 so that's a really big number and it's pretty much double the size of the regular long because you're not using negatives right you're taking the memory that was allocated for here and then adding it onto the memory that was allocated for the positive number and therefore you have a bigger positive number right hopefully that concept makes sense for you you just you know it's unsigned so that means you have more memory available right so now we have an unsigned short so unsigned short bob or sherry two three is equal to something like this and it's going to be of course the same as this one between zero and sixty five thousand five hundred thirty five because you know the same reason okay but finally you have the long long so we, we can make an unsigned long long and the long long itself is already a massive number so we'll just wait and see what this number is going to be so sherry four is equal to and then now we can just take this here and just paste it like that so now we get double the long long and we get this massive number here so 18 whatever whatever I don't even know what this number is it's so big but yeah as you can see here we get this massive number because of course again you're taking the memory from the negative and then adding it to the positive so we have more memory available for positive numbers yeah so I know I said that a million times but hopefully it makes sense for you um, so that's pretty much it you have the different data types for you know managing whole numbers Again, it just depends on how much memory you know you're going to be using. That's how you choose what data type that you want to use in each situation, okay? If you know, for example, that you're going to be working on a NASA mission or something like that, you're probably going to need a long long because you need some crazy numbers to keep track of how many miles in space and I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but you get the point, hopefully. So if you have any questions about what we did this episode, just leave a comment below and I'll be glad to help you. Um, it, you can also join our Discord. There's a Discord link below if you want to join it. Also, all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description. So if you want to check out all the code, it's going to be there for you. In case you forget how to do something, you have an explanation there for you. So anyway, I'm done rambling. If you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe and peace.